Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oshale and you're watching Oshi Reads and I am so excited to bring you today's video because I will be sharing with y'all my Naked Readathon TBR. Yes, it's time, okay? My recommendations video is coming up next, so stay, stay tuned for that. And if you haven't watched the Naked Readathon announcement, you can click right here to go watch it. What have you been doing with your life? Make sure you follow Black Pros Club on all social medias. You can follow our YouTube channel right here. You can also follow us on Instagram at Black Pros Book Club and on Twitter at Black, I wanna say it's Black Pros Book Club on Twitter too but I could be wrong, but I will put that right here. Definitely go check that out because the readathon is about to start. We're gonna be doing all the things. We have Instagram prompts. We have um, TikTok challenges. We have all the things and I am so excited. But first, first, I wanna share with you all my TV. Oh. But first, I want to share with you all my TBR and I'm actually really excited. There have been a lot of books that I've been holding off on reading because I have been waiting for this readathon and I've wanted to save these books up. So, and I've also found some new authors that I'm really excited about. And uh, without further ado, here is my TBR for the Naked Readathon. So prompt number one is Versace on the floor. Read a black romance with your favorite trope. Now my favorite trope as of um, beginning of this pandemic has really been the bully romance, but there are no black romance bully romances. That was a weird sentence. There are no black bully romances. There we go. At least none that I could find. So do your girl a favor and if you do know of some, please leave that information down in the comments because I was searching, just uh, searching so hard and I couldn't find any. So I went with my original pre-pandemic favorite trope, which is friends to lovers. And for that, I chose fans only by B Love. And I will put the cover right here because I will be mostly reading the ebook versions of all of these books because I that's how I usually consume my black romance is via ebook. So here you go, Fans Only by Be Love, and I will read the synopsis to y'all real quick. Merrick and Aries are longtime friends. However, they don't always see eye to eye. During a heated group discussion, the, during a heated group discussion, the opposite sex pairs debate if people can maintain healthy relationships in the sex worker industry because of the popularity of OnlyFans. To settle their opposing views, they agree to create an account together and make some easy, quick money along the way. With dreams neither Merrick nor Aries can afford to loom, they outline the deal. Engage in a public sexual relationship until they've both met their financial goals. The proposal seems full of gain and worthy of the exposure, as if anything is ever that easy. Great sex and big checks become twisted feelings and time only further betrays the performing lovers. When one of them has the chance to be with the person they've lusted after for years, the plan and their friendship is put to the test. This one sounds so spicy, so juicy. It's more of a novella length, but I do want to do all the prompts so I don't want to overwhelm myself that I can read, you know, seven books or six books in six days. Like, I just don't want to take it there. But yes, so that was for prompt number one. Prompt number two is Body Party. Dive into the world of street lit and read a gritty love story. So for this one, I chose Kiss the Throne by Sheree Lewis. This is one that I've been holding off on and waiting for this readathon, and I'm so glad I did because the second book, I guess it's a series, just came out so I can read Kiss the Throne and then hop on to the next book. So, One Empire, Three Men. The throne is at stake, and the Valentine brothers are presented with an opportunity of a lifetime. Their father, Domino, has decided to retire, leaving them with the chance to take over. The one issue that looms over their heads is who is the man that is qualified to run the empire. Once a certain set of rules have been set in place, the Valentine brothers find themselves in a competition that produces a series of dangerous events. Deceit corrupts the family in a manner that wasn't seen coming and secrets are unveiled, leaving the brothers in a war against each other. Who will be the one worthy to take the reins and sit on the throne? Ah! Oh my gosh, I am obsessed 
crime family stuff is <sighs> holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> so I'm so lit for this. And book two is out, so even better. Prompt number three, freak like me. <gasps> Vampires, aliens, and werewolves. Oh my. <laughs> Read a monster smut love story featuring black protagonists. Now this one I'm super hype about because I had to do a little bit of research uh, because monster smut with black protagonists is not really, you know, advertised a lot. But I found one and I'm really excited about this author and it's Succulents by Jade Royal. And it's a vampire story which is even better because it's spooky season and i have really been feeling vampire stuff and i've been wanting to read a lot of vampire books so this is perfect this is a contract a contract that says you're allowing me to do any and everything sexually pleasing to your body within your discretion i guess the only question is are you bold enough to sign it okay what would you do if a dangerously sexy vampire dangled temptation so easily in front of you Trinity was looking for an escape from a reality she despised. What she didn't expect to f was finding that the ultimate escape rested in the whiskey-colored eyes of the sexiest sin vampire who'd crashed into Trinity's life. He invaded every one of her senses and ravished her with need and want. As a human, could she be bold enough to step into a world that was forbidden to her? Could she find her ultimate escape from a life that sought to cling to her despite her desperate pleas to be let go? <laughs> thank you, thank you, dramatic reading, thank you. This is more of an erotica. On, so it's a little bit on the spicier side, but I mean the spicier, the better, you know, when it comes to romance, it's like how I like to roll, so. <laughs> I'm so excited for this and if I love it then Jade Royal is about to become my new go-to and I'm gonna read her whole entire backlist because that's what we do that's just what we do prompt number four pony every time I say that I just start like bopping because I hear the song in my head um read a black sports romance now y'all know how much I freaking love and adore black sports romance I have read so many over the years and I was trying to find something I hadn't read by an author that I'd never read before. So I decided to go with Rookie Mistakes by Denisha Little. I see her all over Instagram and I see people promoting her and liking her work. So I wanted to try her out and see if I would like her books. So I decided to start with Rookie Mistakes. It had a good amount of like a good star rating on Amazon. So I was like, okay, I'll give her a shot. So I'm just pulling up the synopsis. So for Rookie Mistakes, it says, After accepting life's painful detour, Nashaya Jordan finds comfort in her unlikely new path. Now a TV personality, her primary focus is to make Girlfriends Talking Sports the number one show on ESPN. Her plans are interrupted when NBA rookie Sebastian Powers enters her life. NBA. Okay. Growing up in London, Sebastian Powers' only ambition was to become the greatest basketball player of all time. When his arrogance becomes a roadblock to that goal, he meets his match in Nishaya Jordan. What happens when two stubborn souls are forced to face their paths together? That sounds so good. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And if I love Denisha Little, y'all will hear all about it. Prompt number five, red light special. For those who aren't new to this, but true to this, reread your favorite black romance i almost said black sports romance no reread your favorite black romance now for this one i already went through a period of time a couple months ago where i was rereading all my favorite black romances so i don't want to re reread those since i've already read m the majority of them so i took this moment to do something very very wise i love the author desiree she's one of my absolute favorites i think she is a phenomenal storyteller like she has a gift and i read this one book by her that came out last year and i was waiting for the sequel and desiree has blessed me okay with not only the sequel but three okay three following books and i think she's done now with the series you never know what desiree but i was waiting for the sequel she dropped that and i was like okay let me give it a second then she dropped book three and now she's dropped book four so I'm in heaven. So it's finally time to reread the book one so I can just binge my way through. And the book I'm rereading is Hoodwinked and it's book one in the Moon series by Desiree. This is the book I raved about it in some other videos. I will link them here so you can go check out how much I raved because 
it's hard to put into words how much I adore Desiree's writing. Like, it's really hard to put into words. And what an impeccable storyteller she is. She's not predictable at all. Her romances kind of come out of nowhere. Her character development is on a whole nother level because her characters will start out one way and they'll develop so beautifully. But by the time you get to the end of the story, whether it's over, you know, several books, you are so impressed by how the characters have grown and, and evolved. So Hoodwinked is really hard to explain. I want to read the synopsis, but it's not really going to give you what the book is about. And that's what I love about Desiree because she hides all these Easter eggs in her story and her stories. And it doesn't matter what the synopsis says because it's just not going to be as good as the book itself. So I'm going to read the synopsis, even though I just went on a rant about how that's not going to help you. But, you know, continuity. All her life, Jasmine has been groomed in Atlanta's high society to be the perfect woman of wealth, soon to be married off to Percy Hugo Milton to keep money circulating between black families. She realizes she's stuck in a dead end relationship where he basically ain't shit. Money matters most. Marriage is nothing but a business deal and love is non-existent in Percy's eyes. Not to mention he finds her particularly boring and uninspiring. Jasmine becomes desperate when she seeks the help of a spiritual guide. An eccentric witch named Delilah Skye who grants her three things she wants in life. Friendship, great sex, and true love. Yet the reading doesn't go as planned and when Delilah informs Jasmine that everything she wants is hidden in the man she hates the most, Percy. After a wild drunken night in Atlanta a few years ago with some girl he never planned on seeing again, Homer Skye thought he had life figured out. He had the plans laid out to propose to his longtime girlfriend, Nasia Stewart, move her into a house, and start his family immediately. The all-American dream. That is, until he runs into his, to his one-night stand, Pia Milton, and their two-year-old daughter he knew nothing about. With the moon becoming full almost every night in Atlanta, things start to turn upside down as these two stories collide at the hands of black magic, family ties, and messy drama. Determined to find true love, Jasmine takes matters into her own hands by proposing a deal to her cheating fiancé. Pia has to come to terms with tolerating her child's father and the black magic that runs deep in his crazy family. While Homer struggles with the thought of this woman who lied about their daughter for two years might just be the one he's meant to be with all along. Oh my god. Fine print. This story contains a little magic, belief in the impossible, and a few other random things and people that make up the story. Might be some hood shit in there too. I don't know. I say just read it. <laughs> that note was from Desiree herself. <sighs> I'm so happy right now. <sighs> and last but finally, just certainly not least, it's prompt number six, nice and slow, read the group book, which is The Reinvention of the Rose by Christina C. Jones. And I would not be a girl if I didn't read the synopsis for that, so stay tuned. Desperation. Not a phenomenon Tempest could actually claim, but certainly the catalyst for where she's landed. Not in peril or pain, but in dire need of the very normalcy she's often emulated, but never been able to obtain. Now. There is nothing in her way except all those years of being everything except what she now has to become, herself, as soon as she figures out who that is. I know that's very vague, but it's about a female assassin and I feel like that's really all you need to know. Also, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Again, all you really need to know. I mean, that's all I need to know. I mean, you say Beauty and the Beast retelling and I'm, I'm there. I'm handing you my coins. Here is my purse. Give me my things. And that is it for my Naked Readathon TBR. Who's participating? Black love, black love, celebrating black romance. My hair is everywhere. Oh, it's gonna be so good, I can't wait. Please share with me your TBR down below. Which of these books I've mentioned have you either read or sound interesting or do you want to read? Please, please communicate me with me in the comments because honestly, that is the only thing that makes coming back to booktube and making videos worthwhile. Okay, and I will catch y'all in my recommendations video coming up next. Mwah. Bye. Bye.